Hello everyone, this is the Quest for Health YouTube channel with Brother Rai Malak, and this is part two of a short series about understanding mycoplasma. In our last video, we spoke about the difference between mycoplasma and other bacteria, how it was created, and how the government disperses it through mosquitoes and open air testing. We also talked about how they enter the body and spread to various organs. Picking up where we left off in today's video, we will continue discussing some of the diseases that mycoplasma can cause in the body. And then hopefully towards the end, I can give you some advice on exactly how to defend yourself um, against it. So um, let's get started. Uh, the lungs are certainly not the only way for mycoplasma to enter the body. Some species of mycoplasma have preference for causing genital infections. Others can be spread by ticks, and several species of mycoplasma are, found, are commonly found in the intestines. Um, uh, initial infection sites are not absolutely spe species specific. However, mycoplasma pneumonia has been known to cause genital infections and other mycoplasma that typically infect the genitals have been found in the stomach. Um, now this is, this is uh, an interesting fact here, okay? Um, because one of the things that I've researched on mycoplasma, which um, is not mentioned here in this article, is mycoplasma's ability to um, affect the male and female reproductive systems, okay? Um, there are certain strands of mycoplasma that affect the genitals um, and the male and female reproductive organs. And mycoplasmas also happen to be one of the biggest underlying, cause, underlying causes of infertility in women, okay? So this is a, a subject that I will touch on if it be the most high's will in the, in the coming future in um, another video. Um, but let's move on. Um, but no matter where the initial infection occurs, any species of mycoplasma has the potential to spread throughout the body, okay? And we understand that mycoplasma are the smallest um, forms of bacteria in the world. Um, and up to 4,000 mycoplasma can fit into one blood cell in your body, okay? And these bacteria can get inside our cells because they have no cell wall and uh, because they are so small. And when they get inside our cells, they are able to hide from our immune system. And that makes it hard for our immune system to locate and rid our body of these types of microbes. Okay, so um, moving on, we are going to skip this section here. Um, if you want to check out the article in its entirety, um, you can there will be a link to the article down in the description box below, okay? The potential for widespread infection, however, is very much influenced by the status of immune function. If immune function is optimal, the microbe is contained after the initial infection and no long-term harm occurs. Studies from different areas of the world suggest that 30 to 70% of people carry at least one species of mycoplasma without having symptoms. It is essentially, excuse me, it essentially becomes like a normal flora or non-threatening microbes found on the skin in the gut and in the body cavities. But most mycoplasma species are not normal flora, however. They are just waiting for an opportunity. If immune function slips for whatever reason, chronic, system, chronic systemic infection becomes possible. Infection 
can occur in any tissue or organ of the body where mycoplasma can scavenge vital nutrients. Mycoplasma are very efficient scavengers. Any mycoplasma species can infect any organ system in the body. Uh, this causes a wide range of symptoms that are completely unrelated to the initial infection. The general breakdown of tissues by stealth microbes accelerates the aging process and is likely a primary factor in many, if not most, chronic degenerative diseases. So these bacteria, as we see, uh, can live in the body in stealth mode for very long periods of time without showing any signs or symptoms that they are there. Uh, they wait for the individual's immune system to become impaired by some sort of stress or trauma, then that's when they surface and form the attack. Okay. Um, now, there are many types of triggers that can cause an, um, an, uh, an, an, an mycoplasma infection to, um, to take, take a hold on a person. Okay, there are many triggers. These things can range from um, uh, surgery, uh, immune suppressing drugs, antibiotic treatment, um, extreme emotional or physical stress, vaccinations, and more. And uh, once, they, once these organisms bypass the immune system, then they can enter into various organs and inflict damage that eventually manifests itself into chronic disease, chronic illness. And... Um, because they're so elusive, when you go to the doctor, um, they treat you, they, uh, most of the time, these types of um, bacteria don't show up in any of their, any of the blood work because they're not testing for, for these type of things. Okay, the only thing they can see is um, the after effects and the symptoms that a person may be suffering from. And then, then what they do is they look at your symptoms and then they put you in some kind of category um, that they have um, some sort of, uh, they give you some sort of name for the, for the symptoms that you're dealing with. And they claim that you have some sort of, uh, you know, disease in the name of, um, <laughs> you know, multiple sclerosis or uh, rheumatoid arthritis or Alzheimer's. So, they don't get to the root cause of what's actually causing the situ causing the problem in the body. They just look at the symptoms and then they give you, uh, they put you on medications for the, for the symptoms that you're dealing with. And, you know, that's, that's really what um, the medical uh, industry, that's really their way of dealing with this. Okay. Because many people are not informed about the underlying cause causes of these chronic diseases, which we're driving home through this series, uh, understanding mycoplasma, okay, that mycoplasma are indeed a major, major factor in the cause of these types of chronic diseases and, and, and ailments, okay? So let's get back to it. Um, The general breakdown of tissues by stealth microbes. Oh, excuse me, I already read that. Um, let's move on to looking at some of the chronic diseases that can be caused by mycoplasma in more detail. Uh, mycoplasma commonly infects the synovial lining of joints, lining protecting the joint. Okay, so these mycoplasma bacteria can get into the synovial lining of your joints, okay? And when they get there, they cause inflammation. And that inflammation becomes chronic. And it, it becomes what most people know, known to be call, uh, called as rheumatoid arthritis, okay? 90% of people with rheumatoid arthritis test positive for mycoplasma in 
synovial fluid. The most common mycoplasma species associated with rheumatoid arthritis is M. fermentans, but M. pneumonia and other species have also been found. Mycoplasma or other stealth microbes may be an underlying factor in most forms of arthritis. Mycoplasma scavenge fats from the malign sheath covering nerve tissue. Not surprisingly, mycoplasma and other stealth microbes, including chlamydia and borrelia, have been linked to multiple sclerosis. Mycoplasma have been closely linked to other neuro neurodegenerative disease, including ALS. And Parkinson's, okay? What we have here in these, in these neurodegenerative diseases is bacterial infections on the brain. That's what they are, okay? It's not just because we're getting old. It's not just because, um, you know, it's not just a disease that people just get because it's just a natural part of life. Okay, there are micro, micro, microbes, okay, there are mycoplasma bacteria on the brain, destroying the brain tissue, causing neurodegenerative diseases, okay, this is what it is. Mycoplasma have been found in the bone marrow of children with leukemia, okay? So as you can see, wherever these things get into, they cause damage, okay? They cause damage. Mycoplasma has been found in cancer tissue, including cer cervical and ovarian cancer. Finding my mycoplasma in cervical cancer suggests that it may be a cofactor in cervical cancer along with human uh, pap papilloma, uh, human papillomavirus or HPV. Um, mycoplasma has been demonstrated to fac facilitate the entry of certain viruses into cells, okay? Mycoplasma as a top candidate for explaining autoimmunity, it stimulates host self damage and that it can live inside cells while simultaneously turning off the ability of the immune system to recognize the cell as abnormal. Okay, mycoplasma has been linked to many autoimmune diseases. Which disease occurs is independent on the genetic profile of the person and other self microbes that may be involved. Okay, so these are stealth microbes. They're designed. You wanna know how they're doing this? They've been designed, they've been genetically modified. They've been created to do this. They've been created to enter into a person and to wreak havoc on a person's body, all the while being undetectable, okay? It's a stealth microbe patented and created, invented by the US government. And um, another disease that we can see that is, that is responsible, that mycoplasma is responsible for is Lyme disease. Mycoplasma is a common Lyme co-infection. 75% or more of Lyme disease cases. Mycoplasma is known to be carried and spread by ticks. Okay, so just like the mosquitoes, the mycoplasma or um, infected mosquitoes spread mycoplasma bacteria. Mycoplasma um, infected ticks also cause disease um, as well. They cause Lyme disease, okay? 
I wonder who, I wonder, um, I wonder how the, how microplasma infected ticks are getting into our society. Could it be the same way microplasmic infected mosquitoes are being released into our society? I'll let you decide. Okay. But it is also possible that microplasma is already present in the body when a tick bite carrying brovella occurs, immune compromise caused by the new tick-borne infection, and possibly other co-infections allows microplasma to flourish and cause symptoms. Okay, so there are multiple types of different types of strands of bacteria involved in Lyme disease that cause Lyme disease. It's multiple different types of strands of mycoplasma that work together to cause Lyme disease. Most symptoms that occur in Lyme disease can be caused by mycoplasma. Okay. Beyond Lyme disease, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue patients often test positive for at least one species of mycoplasma, along with other stealth microbes. A high percentage of GO4 syndrome sufferers test positive with different varieties of mycoplasma along with other stuff, microbes. And we're gonna stop right there.